And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Gruul Henge. Uh, as most of you know, we played this deck two days ago on stream and uh, it did really well. You know, like we won all of our matches and uh, it felt really good. And it was a fun deck to play. And with me going on a short vacation this weekend, I wanted to play this deck again um, before I go. So here we go. It's Gruul Henge, our last deck before that. Um, as you can see, uh, I will, won't be streaming Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, so we won't have the YouTube uploads there, so if you're watching this later on YouTube. Um, but of course, we always have just lots of videos on the stream. Hopefully, you're catching up with anything that you've missed. Um, and of course, hope you're having a happy Thanksgiving as well. But first, let's go back to Gruul Henge. You know, this deck is, is all, about, um, it's all about playing creatures, and we have different elements with our creatures. First, we need to ramp, right? Like, that's just a really important thing to be doing with uh, green decks. We want to be getting as much mana as possible. So, you know, we have our Incubation Druids, our Paradise Druids. So our Druids help uh, help us ramp, plus the Domries do as well. They can add mana. The Anarch of Bolas and the Chaos Bringer, both of those can um, bring mana as well. All right, so we're doing ramping. We also have, um, well, I guess Cavalier of Thorns is, an, is another ramp card. Really, whenever we get to Cavalier of Thorns, you know, like that, that's definitely a ram card. But we also have um, aggressive elements to our deck, of course, because we're a Gruul deck. So, you know, we have Spellbreaker and Questing Beast that are haste creatures that get to do a lot of damage uh, very fast. And then we have our late game as well, like with the, that I was going to be saying with the Cavalier of Thorns. Um, you know, it has the card advantage built into it. Whenever it dies, you can put something, you know, choose whatever you want to put back on top of your library. And, of course, the Great Henge is really our, our main late game uh card advantage engine so yeah we get to be aggressive we have a good late game because of the great henge kind of everything uh wrapped up into one some of the individual card choices um you know bronzadon and sunder shaman are both pretty powerful these days with all of the artifacts and enchantments everywhere um sunder shaman is a pretty nice one being a five five it matches up well against like the jeskai um cavaliers it can you know trade with with those um plus it's just you know difficult thing to to block it does get blocked by um uh what's it called um cauldron familiar it does get blocked by cauldron familiar very easily and blocked forever there and so that's why we're playing a vivian because we want, like, the Vivian can give our creatures trample. So, a Vivian can give a Sunder Shaman or Cavalier of Thorns, can give these things trample to be able to get through. Um, you could also play an Ember Cleave in this slot as well. I, I'm liking the Vivian, but you could do that as well. And then we got Ravager Worms that also can pair up well against the other Cavaliers. You know, it could be a 5 6 whenever it enters, or you can do 4 or 5 haste. Um, so, you know, you can use this as a removal spell to be able to fight other creatures or basically every single deck is playing castles and so with the castles everywhere i think that's uh means that ravager worms in a pretty good spot where you can have this be like a four or five haste that that also enters the battlefield and destroys a land um to help reduce the resources for the opponent um Anyway, uh, yeah, if, if you missed this video last time that you played it, hopefully you check out that video of us playing it uh, two days ago as well because it worked out very well previously. But we'll get to some games. Let's see how we do. Traditional, standard, ranked, Gruul Henge. Here we go. So somebody said, I don't understand why the Great Henge is a, is a tree. Isn't it some kind of circles on the field? Something like that. And then... Another person says the henge is a portal in the lore. So that so I guess it's a portal in a tree. Yeah, I've always thought of a henge as like brushes, like bushes. Bush bushes? That sounds like that sounds weird saying that bushes uh there's no reason to shock in i was kind of just talking and i just shocked in but 18 is really the new 20 with life totals so we're, we're starting with 18 because that's really the new 20 like all the cool kids are going to 18 hmm 
So they're missing lands as well. My best play here would be play Domri. Like if I... I would... I want to play Domri here. The problem with playing Domri is that they could kill my Paradise Druid. That's the problem with playing Domri. They could also just have next turn Spellbreaker and then have five haste damage and kill Domri that also. Let's just play this thing. Yeah, cool kids skip third land drop too. And we can see with my opponent skipping the third land drop. Yay, land. Let's see some panic in the... What's that? Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Uh, would I would I main deck everything like this for best of one? Honestly, not sure, uh, and, and maybe not. Um, all right, so if they have if they have Colossus, this thing goes to a seven three, so seven power two would trample over, so that's fine. Maybe not. I, I may like lower the curve a little bit for best of Hit one. Me or again. Or maybe Bone Crusher Giants would be like the thing to be playing in best of one. Uh, did you just call me scrawny? Uh, I've lived with animals my entire life. Explains a lot, actually. Is my mic on a desk stand? Uh, I guess so. Is this a desk stand? Yeah, that that sounds. Yeah, I think that's sounds like the words to call that thing. But so basically, I just wanted to get the Domri in play. Uh, we're attacking like this next turn with this Cavalier anyway. I'm not sure exactly instead of what, like maybe for the Bone Crusher, because I feel like with best of one you want the the Bone Crusher for like the extra the extra uh, removal because you you see more aggro. I'd probably get rid of one of the Ravager Worms. Um, maybe like get rid of the Ravager Worm, a Sunder Shaman, and a Brontodon, like. Maybe just that. Maybe get rid of the Sunder Shaman and one Ravager Worm and play. Okay, so now I can see the deck. So for best of one, you get rid of one of these and that. And play two Bone Crushers. You still have the two Brontodons. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'd probably do that for best of one. Get those two Bone Crushers in there. Could play another Bone Crusher over one of the four Domries. Or like, especially maybe over one of these Anarch Boluses. They're going to be under siege more. Anyway, this matchup, my opponent's not really playing artifacts or enchantments. So we want these Bone Crushers in. Sunder Shaman's a good blocker. Let's get that back in. This is a pretty decent Ravager War matchup, but obviously we can't just have all six mana cards. But it is a good Ravager War matchup. I'll cut this other four, three mana Domri. Yeah, my opponent just did never hit land drops there.
Cult Collector. Alright, that's a good sign. How? Killing that thing before it can grow. I'm taking a lot of damage here. Down to seven. Ugh. Down to three. They could have another... They could certainly have another uh, Colossus, but if not, I don't really like that... that use of that other Colossus. But if they have another one, it's a good use. But basically, I would have saved it for right here. But okay, okay, yeah, they just had the Ember Cleave. It's fine. Oh, I didn't put this extra ambush in. Gotta get that extra ambush in. I'll bring in the second Shaman instead of the second Ravager Worm. Okay, game three. It's all about so yeah, we'll, we'll have the shaman for Ember Cleave. If you know, if we hit our opponent, it's all about if we can stabilize. We're going to be winning late games. My opponent's going to be winning games just like that. So you know, if if we lose, it's going to be just like that. If we can stabilize, get to the late game, we'll be we'll be good. Hey Simon, yeah, Orzhov Troll Knights did really well again. That's definitely a fun deck for sure. Hey, Yoko, happy Thanksgiving. All right, good hand. Just get these things out of here. Hmm.
Ugh. I knew I should have just attacked. No, I should have just attacked. Debating between that attacking or not attacking. The wild wasn't meant okay. to be contained. Going with the Vivian. All things begin and end in nature. That's rough. Their last card's another Colossus. Uh, that Colossus card has been really, really good. Man, that Colossus is going to kill me. Why, why would my opponent bluff there? Just risk their creature just dying? Hey, Mana Traders, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm going to be heading down to a friend's house in Atlanta. It's about six hours, six, seven hours away and spending time with him and his family and, um, you know, just, just having a, a fun weekend playing, you know, board games and video games and stuff like that. And we're going to be going to an escape room. That'll be my first time ever going to an escape room. And you know, it should just be a wonderful weekend. No, well, it will be. They didn't tick up Vivian or okay, so they are they are ticking down. You can still walk away. All right, so what do they got? Bone Crusher Giant. Definitely wish I would have got that attack in for five earlier. So there's that, that Colossus. Be a good time to draw any of our four 
Cavalier Thorns or one of our three the Great Henges. Ugh. That's bad. That means my opponent has lethal. I need a top tech now. Yeah. Good. Oh man, four spells. That's kind of rough. Those were good spells to mill over too. I mean, those like you know, drawing Ravager Worm would be amazing. But even Sunder Shaman blocks really well. This thing's a three-five, so that blocks really well. Mm. That's lethal. I will survive you. Darn, we lost the Gruel Mirror this time. That was just back and forth, us us both having very good top decks. Theirs were a little bit better, though. Well, I mean, I was at, because I was at 5, they're at 11. If, if I would have done that attack for 5 a lot earlier, I could have been, like, forcing my opponent to chump the Sunder Shaman and stuff. Oh no, wrong way. 0 and 1. Um, my opponent's MVP was definitely Colossus. Those games 2 and 3. Colossus was just incredible. They had 3 Colossus. Or I guess 2 and a number cleave. The, the second game and then 2 more Colossus. The third one. That card was V good. Yay, the Great Henge. Obviously, we need a lot more mana now. Now, like, our hand is loaded. Now, all we need to draw is lands. I don't think I can play you yet. All right, so they're Gruul Adventures. So they're definitely playing four Bone Crusher Giants. I just gotta hope that they don't have Bone Crusher Giants in hand right now. Good. Good evening, I'm a crazy beast. Where do you see my mates? They can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> We drew a land, and they didn't have Bone Crusher Giant. Wow, they did. They didn't kill my Incubation Druid. Well, uh -huh, look at you. that's fine. Yeah, this, yeah, Gruul is a great deck to play. Yep, it's just a, a fun creature deck. Yep. Yeah, Gruul's good. Going teamer. All right, come on, land. Thanks, Andrew. Keep duels off of person ofs. Let's just fight. All right, so we're just uh, throwing away the ambush to get a counter on the Incubation Druid, hoping they don't kill my Incubation Druid. That's a good sign. That's probably them not killing Incubation Druid. 
Uh, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. That's a really bad sign. Hey, thank you so much there, Morgan. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. That's a really bad sign for me, because that probably means Brazen Bar- Uh, it is Brazen Borrower. No. Oh, that was just the worst. Well. Darn. We just played this adventure deck, and Brazen Borrower was always horrible for us. <laughs> it was always just a just a really bad card that I wish was something else. That was just amazing there, you know, being stuck on mana and having two big mana producers. It's just like the perfect the perfect situation for bouncing with Brazen Borrower. This card, Escape to the Wild, is looking great, though. That card is looking great. That's oh, certainly a card that... Uh, that last league, I would have loved to have escaped to the wilds. Yes, yes, I'm, um, as you'll know, I'm planning on, on buying a new computer this weekend and you know the it'll take some time for the parts to come in and then I'll be putting it together and everything so hopefully by next weekend we'll have a new computer that hopefully won't be have the the lag issues but um I know it's it's bad at times yeah that borrower was perfect So I like Flame Sweep because you know, like they make a whole just just a whole bunch of one ones. But then you know, Flame Sweep takes out my my mana creatures and stuff too. I guess we're just going Bone Crusher Giant instead of Spellbreaker for this matchup. I think the three three body isn't as important, but we gotta kill the Edgewall Innkeepers. Let's get a fourth ambush in here. I think I want Sunder Shaman over Brontodon. Oh, awesome, Honors. Glad you're enjoying the Esper Planeswalker deck. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we got mana. Let's give us a try. Turn three, quest and beast. Mm -hmm. 
What am I drawing a Sunder Shaman and be able to play turn three Sunder Shaman to be able to destroy a Lucky Clover if they have it? All right, no Lucky Clover. See, I like that my opponent's playing Grow Spirals. I think that's, I was kind of missing Grow Spirals in my deck. You know, like they're playing the Grow Spirals and, and then the five mana, the five mana ramp card that they just had that you go to play the two extra cards that exiles the top five. Because that was how I was struggling with the Soul Tide deck, was I didn't have enough mana. We will have to draw a spell. I don't think that just Paradise Druid and Questing Beast will win the game. I don't think so, at least. Definitely won't win the game. Ooh, I look forward to seeing you. Gonna take a gander. Any geese here? Want to spell? Want to draw spells to your lands? That's greedy. Yeah, this escape to the wilds is just looking incredible. That's exactly what I was hoping they were going to attack there. I'm getting miffed now. <laughs> A little pick me up before the real fun begins. So we got him down to four. Yeah, Kefnet with Escape to the Wilds could be sweet. Ooh, that does sound pretty awesome. A Kefnet Escape to the Wilds deck. The, the reason why Teamer looks stronger than Sultai is because my opponents had mana. They've also had better hands than I've had, but it's that, that extra mana. So I need to, to kind of design more ramp in there. Escape to Wilds is really good. That's a good one. I don't think that Bone Crusher Giant is better than... Order of Midnight and Foulmire Knight and Murderous Rider, though.
All right, Gruelhenge. We're going to have to do better. Escape to the wild card being just a, a draw five and ramp. That card looks so impressive, those two games. Gave my opponent so many cards. Maybe I need Escape to the Wilds in here. This is tough. All these cards are good. Clover is better than Henge. I mean, yeah, when you, when you, when you have Clover, it's better than having like, you know, we don't, we never had Henge. But yeah, Lucky Clover was was incredible both those games for sure. It really turned like the Bone Crusher Giants into being a good card and and it made that Brazen Borrower um You know, that Brazen Borrower being that bounce too whenever I was stuck on mana. Yeah, it's definitely the, the flavor of the week is that Team or Adventure deck for sure. Been playing against it a lot the last two days. Ugh. All right. Ah, it's a beautiful day for chaos, isn't it? So this looks like, you know, with this mana base, this looks like a Wilderness Reclamation. Bustin' Heads is my bread and butter. Wish you could see your face when I'm beating you. So Dom, you don't have to worry about a counter spell for questing beast. And you do have to have a target for for like the opponent to be able to play Domri's Ambush. I can't just play Domri's Ambush just to put a counter on my creature. You do, you know, you do have to have a target on their side. So I can't just use this as put a sixth power on this to try to, ha to try to have lethal. Ah, sorry, to try to have lethal. Not allowed to do that. I mean, our deck's not really a Colossus deck. But yeah, I understand like wanting Colossus and other Gruel decks because of that, but I 
we're trying i mean what we're trying to do is you know have cavalier thorns ramp and and play the great henge and you know play a long game with the great henge like that's what we're trying to do it's just these three games haven't really looked like that at all oh you trying to knock me down All right, take all those out. Yeah, Joe. Like, uh, yeah. Last weekend we we ranked down a whole lot, but then but then also like today. I mean, after the Orzov Troll Knights, we were at like number like three hundred just earlier today. So we've gone from like three hundred. We went. We've been one in six in our last seven matches, and so we're down to ninety six percent now. Fluctuates quite a bit. I'm going haste here. There's not. You want to be above two toughness against their deck with uh, flame sweep, bone crusher giant, that kind of stuff. There's not really much difference between three and four toughness. Like things that kill the three toughness, like things that kill four toughness are probably also killing three toughness. You know, like I'm not expecting like, um, you know, like Jaya's greetings and scorching dragon fires and things like that. It would be exactly three damage. The card we've played against to m the most today by a really, really long ways is Gr Growth Spiral. It seems like every single opponent is just playing a whole bunch of Growth Spirals. And they've been awesome. That's what I'm really taking away from today. Growth Spiral is looking really good. Worst case scenario is Flame Sweep plus Expansion Explosion. Obviously, my opponent has that. That's kind of how these last two leagues have been. Opponents have had these worst case scenarios. Hopefully, Bronzedon. Destroying this Wilderness Reclamation helps us out, but it already has a whole lot of mana. I don't have very many cards. So I could just go for the Ravager Worms. I think we do that.
Face meal. Alright, we got a game. Okay, so you, you built the best one version of the troll deck. It did quite well, but not still 100% where you want to have it. You went a little bit more life gain for the aggro matchups. And the M20 Ajani. Okay. Cool, cool. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I could have played the Kiora first. Um, and drawn a card, but this way I don't have to show them the Kiora. That match was a good showing of why Two toughness isn't as valuable against our opponent stuff. With all those flame sweeps and bone crusher giant. <laughs> Missed that value, but gained the value of my opponent not knowing about Kiora. All right, we need another land deck. Hey, Tabitha. We need... So this is a 25 land deck. But even though we're playing seven mana creatures, I'm still playing 25 lands with the goal of, you know, hitting land drops to get to Cavalier Thorn. That's going to be tough. That was pretty awesome there. Yeah, ambusher got me. I mean, I guess it, I didn't. I didn't really keep anything in for ambusher. It got me. I, I don't have anything in here for ambusher.
That's my fault with sideboarding. I didn't have anything for Ambusher. I... Yeah, that, that turn four Ambusher... Got me really good. You know, if it's if it's like a late game ambusher, you know, like turn six, seven, eight, like, you know, maybe we can get like, you know, already have like a good enough battlefield, and you know, that's fine. But that early in the game, with the ambusher being a removal spell there on the spellbreaker, it was just too good. I didn't have anything for it. Well, unfortunately, this isn't really how I wanted to, you know, go out before the break. Have my last two YouTube videos before a three-day three -day break be like this. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Maybe we can turn this around when we're... You know, we'll play two more matches. Maybe we can turn this around, win these last two matches. Still finish with the 2 3. Obviously, I'm not blocking. It's just, do they have more damage to do to the Spellbreaker plus the Shock? Which, obviously, I, I can't really win if they do. Or, I mean, well, I mean, I need to draw more creatures now. That obviously just hurts everything in my hand. Rightfully belongs to it. Uh, I'm made for conflicts like this. And Legion War Boss was just so perfect. Like, they didn't have to use another spell on Vivian with Legion War Boss. I guess this is just Ember Cleave. Should be better at sideboarding. Get all those things in. Take these out, this out, this out. That out. Get 
you and Do I want the fourth ambush or the third Brontodon? All right. This looks better. Doesn't look better. Um, the hench just no, the hench is how we win. You know, gaining that life every turn. It's gonna be how we really how we win. I'm not sure, like, if we're supposed to go grab mountain or grab forest, because, you know, we don't have... Because you know, we need both for the Sunder Shaman. I guess I wait a turn. Let's draw a card. Yeah, we need to get there, but that's that's what we just did with the sideboard, is we took out all the other fluff and put in a whole bunch of cards that help us get to the Great Henge. Should be a lot easier to get to the Great Henge here after sideboarding. Than what it was pre-board. You know, we took out, you know, like the Domries and Vivians and Ravager Worms, you know, like all those cards that don't help us get to the Great Henge. Bleh. Need to grab red. Yeah, 5-2 haste. That's pretty scary. Ugh, tap land. Alright, now we can block with the Sunder Shaman. Silly legendary cards. Well, at least they don't have the mana to re-equip the Empereth Paladin to Embercleave. Had to block there, otherwise, you know, we were just gonna be dead the next turn. Is my opponent at 15?
I think we got this one, though. Definitely got this one. Alright, that was close. No, this isn't going to be the last stream with the old PC. Like, whenever I start, whenever I come back on Monday, I'll still, ha you know, like, it It takes time for, like, the PC to, to come in, and then I'll have to, you know, build it and, and get it ready and for streaming and everything, so that'll take a little bit of time. So I'll probably have, like, like basically next week is my guess, like, you know, like, probably Monday through Friday, like, next week or so. a great hand if we had red mana it'd just be a really great hand i would love to keep it and we have a red source on top uh can we just go back to that first hand You to find, yeah. If you want to find all all the decks, they're right there. Or of course, any you can also check out the YouTube channel. Man, yeah, what a disappointing game this was. I really liked our deck after sideboard for this matchup, but. We don't have lands, we can't play. The second hand really wasn't that good. I couldn't cast anything at all. If I drew a land, I could, you know, cast a Brontodon. We had to just hit, like, a whole lot of running lands. I had to draw, like, three lands with that other hand, with that second hand. Yeah, Sunder Shaman definitely does stuff. I mean, it's a 5-5. A five, five. Five fives are hard to deal with. It ate two lava coils. So that's not bad. Oh, come on. Why do our opponents just always have to have everything? Hmm. 
Hmm. Surprised they didn't attack, to be honest. I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> the last the last two leagues, the last nine matches, our opponents have just had everything all the time. We keep mulliganing to six. Sometimes five. like cool hand and I mean this this deck's really not bad at all you know like last time we played it we went 4-0 it's just today today just nothing seems to work So certainly, certainly sad that these are the last two leagues before leaving for vacation for three days. There, be careful. We won't All right, we have. We have four Cavalier Thorns in this deck. So hopefully we draw Cavalier Thorns. And we have three Great Henches. So hopefully we can draw Great Henches. Oh, have at it, boys. Or we can just draw lands Come and, and more mana creatures. There we go. We found a Cavalier Thorn. Oh, I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. And of course, we get to play this, um, you know, after taking up the Dom Ring to make sure they can't counter it, that they would have counter spells. And we found extra cavaliers, so if they if they kill this, you know, if they have a, a sweeper. Then we get more cavaliers back. So we can keep on ramping, looking for the Great Henge. Oh, have at it, boys. There's a great henge.
Does another deck have... Yeah, we have 12 duels in here. Four Fable Passage, four Highland, four Stomping Ground. For like those last couple of games like where we were just having all of our basics and couldn't find... You know, couldn't have like either green or, or red, whatever color we were missing. Scry two to the top. I can no longer stand by and watch. Here goes nothing. Oh, I mean, I guess I should have destroyed the Othakai. Uh, I could have done that. I should have done that. Yeah, I, I, I should have just killed the Othakai. Uh. I was thinking about what I wanted to get back. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, I definitely should have just destroyed that thing. Yeah, so they, they would have just wrathed in response to my, um... I'm starting to get miffed now. Why are they just wasting these Othakaias? Oh, on that Domri. Because they want to use him on this Domri, because this Domri is going to minus, and you would be able to kill this Domri. We won't answer to other guilds. Chomp. Doom foretold. Oh, did I did I not grab both creatures? <laughs> That's my bad. Uh, 
Um, all right, let me let me see if I can figure this out. Yeah, thanks QQ. I, I don't know. I didn't know how to do that. Sorry, I'm late. No, I am not making this up as I go. So I'm at 15 cards in library. So one of these two cards has to deal with the Cavalier. Of course, we can we can give it plus two power with the Vivian. Mm. That thing can make a blocker. Okay. GG's. Okay, so that that game was kind of a mess. By me, not Definitely not my best played game or anything. But we got through it. Okay. So let's see. I normally wouldn't really like Domery in this matchup, but we did see they were playing those counter spells. Maybe I don't need Bone Crusher Giant. I was thinking like Bone Crusher Giant could take out a Teferi the Minus, so I don't have to attack it. So they're playing Doom Foretold, which is why I want to play all these Brontodons. I don't know, maybe we're not supposed to be playing all these Brontodons, though. Hmm. Bone Crusher does trigger Kiora, of course. All right, let's give this a try. All right, Joe. Have a good night. All right, we need to get land to be able to get this Kiora out here. Cure could be pretty important. Ooh, the Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. So my opponent could be playing like Thief of Sanity 
post board, something like that. Come on, land. Yay. Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, Serpents. Oh, I love them all. All right, now we need to keep drawing more land. Ooh, they're going risky by taking that Brontodon. Nailed it. One drop ripples and grows. All right, that was a good turn. <laughs> First time seeing this planeswalker on the battlefield. It's a good one. Um, huh. I think I take Bone Crusher because it triggers Kiora. Cavaliers are just ramping for us. They're down to two cards. in Christ. Sacrifice this thing. Did you just call me Scrolly? This line puts him down to two. Like we get to kill the we get to destroy the Doom Foretold and they go down to two. Where I have the Bone Crusher Giant that's lethal. So, like, they have to Wrath and they have to have a counter for the Bone Crusher Giant, and then they'd have to have something for my Haste Creature, also. It's basically just impossible. Yeah, that game felt good. That game felt good. That was that was a good win. We actually had, you know, we had our land drops. We had uh, Cavaliers that helped just keep hitting land drops. We got the card advantage. That that match felt a lot better. Yeah, that was a good way to end right there. All right, so again, uh, so you know, even though we went one four, but I still feel like this deck's pretty strong. It just you know, didn't work out there with some of the games. The one card that I don't like in the deck is probably the Kral Harpooners. So I'll have to kind of like go back and, and you know, kind of think about like, you know, how the 
you know, like what we lost to, how did we lose? What can we do better against those decks that we lost to? What could we use in our sideboard? Uh, I feel like we could use, you know, so I think, I think the Kral Harpooners could be basically something else. So I think you can have two free sideboard slots there um, to, to help out with uh, something else, you know, like whatever else we need. And I'm not exactly sure what to replace them with. I kind of just had the Harpooners in here as like my last cards to just kind of have against, you know, like maybe to kill like Gilded, Gilded Geese. But honestly, they're just not necessary. Um, so that they're just not necessary. Yeah, we played a good amount of Historic. We played an Orzov Control in Ranked yesterday in Historic, and that was a lot of fun. So that's up on the YouTube channel. And of course, uh, for those those of y'all, if you missed any of the decks today or missed any of the other decks at all, I hope you check out the YouTube channel and uh, you know for all the, the replays of all the videos. This specific deck, like I said, we played this two days ago, um, also in Ranked, and we went undefeated. Uh, two days ago and um and so you know that kind of shows that you know some days you know maybe you know like you're drawing well and your opponents aren't drawing as well other days um you're the one not drawing as well and your opponents are drawing well and you know like they're like these games are always really really close um you know it's all about um you know who has you know better opening hand top decks there and there like none of these matches like even these ones that we're losing they're not matches we're going to be losing all the time and the ones that we were winning before are ones that we're not going to be winning all the time that's just how it's been um the harpooners have been saving you from rankle okay yeah harpooners are good against rankle that's a that's something where the harpooners can definitely be good against for sure there um but that's gruel henge um, again, I won't be streaming the, the next three days. So unfortunately, my last two videos are a couple of one fours, but they were still good games, even though we weren't necessarily winning. They were still just entertaining games on both sides. Hopefully, um, you know, y'all and YouTube are, are enjoying those videos too. And, and hopefully even though I'm taking three days off, you know, how I, I make like three to five videos every single day, hopefully that's still just a lot of content for you to catch up on. Um, and so hope y'all are watching all of the, the videos and stuff on YouTube and getting a good amount of views over there while uh, I'm gone on this mini vacation. My biggest vacation of the year, three days off. First time I've had three days off all year. Um, really haven't really had two days off besides the one time my power was out for two days. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's it here for Gruel Henge. So uh, also for those of y'all on YouTube, hit that like button over there, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, comments always help too. Hope you're doing all that stuff. And then uh, one last thing, I hope you check out our Patreon page and join our Patreon community over there. Um, it's just three dollars a month, which is about two and a half cents per video that I put out a month. So if you're enjoying my content, want to help support a little bit, hope you join Patreon. And then I also uh, just do like blog posts over there and, and do some writing on Patreon. Um, and so you can check out those as well. Hey, the Danimal with the sub. Thank you so much there, Danimal. Yep. All right. So that's it here for Gruel Henge. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend.